There we go. Now it stopped. Won't do that no more. So now we're hot. <laughs> but how about them Texans? And the Spurs, they lose almost, another close one, almost man. Almost got a quad dub, though. Yeah, almost. But, you know, that's the thing. The the Spurs right now, as currently constructed, they lack experience, man, down the stretch. That's basically what it is. If you look at some of these games that they've lost that have been really close, it comes down to execution and experience down the stretch. I mean, look at what they're doing it's right talent, now. It's talent, dude. It's talent. But I'm they saying – the experience has a lot to play in it. They don't know how to win, you know, and, and you have to lose a lot of the games in order to finally figure out how to win. And it is talent, too, because I had a discussion with my boy Jonas Clark yesterday when the Spurs were playing and we were going back and forth. Winners, winners win, dude. They, they don't have yeah, the talent. I mean, they don't have the, they have the talent to, to, to be close to the games. They don't have the talent to win. And the, the idea that. They're just going to get experience and suddenly become winners? No, no, no. It's not no. true. I'm saying if they have the experience to win, you know, and that comes with veteran players, you know, getting people that know how to win, know how to close games, that comes with the talent. Right. I get that. You know, and that's what they're lacking in these close games. If they had won some of these close games, they'd be flirting with maybe the 10 spot, 11 spot, but they're not. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> What's going on, San Antonio? What's going on, South Texas? This is the Alamo City Sportscast coming at you from the west side of San Antonio. West Bear County also represented. My name is Mike Jimenez. That is Joe Garcia. We have a big show because we have a blockbuster trade to report. Jerry Jones, take some notes, okay? This is what's called going all in because the Cowboys haven't done squat, but the Houston Texans are making moves. They picked up a star Pro Bowl wide receiver we knew was in the works, too, because they were making moves in the past week, cleared up cap space. Now we know why. We're going to talk about the Spurs almost went into Denver shorthanded without Vassell, without Sohan, <laughs> without Keldon Johnson, almost pulled out a victory. Another moral victory? Well, this is this is the <laughs> best of the moral victories because Victor Webanyama almost oh, had a quadruple Almost. Double. That's almost. the season of the Spurs. That's their battle cry for this season. Almost. But here's the thing. Would it have been an asterisk if he had gone to overtime and he had gotten it? It's only happened four times in NBA history, twice by a spur. Yeah. David Robinson once did it. Alvin Robinson once did it. Would it have been an asterisk type of thing if they had gone into OT no, to make that man. happen? If he would have gotten it, he would have gotten it. Man, That's y- bad bottom line. Jokic went off yesterday, but again, what a big night. Man, the Joker is... What a fucking joke, dude. That guy is just so damn good. I was watching him yesterday, and I'm just like, he's not fast. He's not, like, the most athletic guy. But goddamn, that guy can fucking win, dude. He well, no one, no one wants to give him the flowers that he gets because we talked the other he's day. He's so good, dude. We talked, we talked the other day about <laughs> Kobe Bryant being, is he a top five player? Kobe Bryant isn't Jokic. Jokic is ridiculous, Jokic is a greater dude. player than Kobe Bryant. And yes, I'll say it again. Nikola Jokic is a greater player than Kobe Bryant. The brother hit like almost a full court pass on the other side of the bo- on the other side of the court, inbounding the ball to a wide open. What's his name? I forgot the guy's name. He used to play for the Lakers now. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's wide open behind the three point line. He doesn't even miss his beat, dude. He just beautiful pass, catches it, boom, money. I'm like, dude. dude. <laughs> I mean, come on. It is man. crazy. And by the way, before we get going with the show, because we do sports, we do pop culture, we do a lot of nostalgic things around here. We have a lot to get into today. But my goodness, the number of subscribers we picked up in the last 24 hours. Crazy. Dude. You texted me last <laughs> night around 10 o'clock. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, well, why is Joe texting so late? And then you said, did you see the number of subscribers? We're going to get to 1,000 real quick. Now, we were at 7... 70 yesterday yeah, before the show started and we've been picking up about two or three now we restarted the podcast back in january yeah you know i'm i'm back we're doing this full time yep and we were at at that time maybe about 500 yeah we hadn't crossed 600 and we had we had been picking up about two or three a day one two or three maybe we get four 
And then something happened yesterday where we went from 770 to 833. Yeah, I, I gave away. I'm giving away Spurs tickets. That's part of it. But the, the show is also improving in a lot of different ways because we yeah. do have the giveaway of the Spurs tickets, yeah. which you have to be a subscriber to, yep, to win. To win. Um, but we also have big things in the horizon. I got off. Yeah. The, uh, I have been in talks with Frank Harris, UTSA legend. No, going to be on the show next week. San Antonio royalty. Right San Antonio there. royalty will be on the show next week. And I, 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 I texted Frank about it and I said, Hey, you know, I want this to be a different interview than any other place. Okay. Yeah. This is not going to be a San Antonio sports star or a ticket 760 or a Ken's five or a case at 12 interview. I want to get to know this guy because my thing about Frank Harris is this. Why is not he working with a case at or a Ken's? Maybe I, I don't know if he is or not. I know he works for UTSA. Yeah. But he is such a big name and such a big draw that if I was a program director of a radio station here in town, Sports Star, Ticket 760, if I was the news director of Ken's case, and I know these people, by the way, yeah, why aren't you all over Frank Harris? Everyone loves the guy. Who He's going to be on our show. We're going to iron out the details as to the date. I was thinking like Monday or Tuesday, but we have the Eclipse. And Monday, I have uh, some work things. So maybe we'll do it Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Yeah. Uh, but Frank Harris will be on sometime next week. We're excited about that. Again, thank you for the follows. Now up to 833 as of this morning. Impressive, man. We're going to get 834. Just picked up another one. Jeez, We dude. just picked up another one. So we are on the march to 1,000. And I had said that when we get to 1,000, I would celebrate with a party. Yeah, but... I was thinking that's going to be like in August. No, man, it's going to happen. This is going to be the next month or two. Remember, we had said if the weather is nice, if it's it's at time, maybe you go in the dunk tank for yeah. charity. <laughs> Charlie Hernandez says he's been with us since the beginning. Awesome job, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Charlie, for being one of our diehards. Sith Elias coming out and saying it was the Lizzo meme that made it happen. <laughs> that had that was a good dead, one. Dude. That was a good one. On Twitter, I'm at MJ. How did they do this, dude? They're so quick with it. They man. do it so fast. I'm like, and you know man. what? I was gonna post a photo of me and my daughter from the other. This was from a couple of years ago. Yeah, and it is so meme worthy. Oh my goodness! And is that the oldest one or the youngest? My one? oldest one. Okay, it was. Uh, I went to an LSU football game with my daughter against. They played Auburn. Yeah, and Auburn won at the last second. And uh, my one of my best friends took a photo of me and Gabby. Gabby, yeah. As the tie turned, as that winning <laughs> play had happened, You're all excited. We, no, no, because we lost. <laughs> oh, so we okay. are in shock and, oh. because it was a it, we, it was a collapse. Auburn went came back oh, to win the okay. game, and and there's a photo that I have that I know that if I ever posted it, <laughs> they meme it. It's gonna be a meme. No oh, man, it's gonna be an outright meme. Uh, but man. As Chris says on our YouTube stream, 834, amazing. We're live not only on YouTube, but we're back on Facebook. We're back on Twitter. Now, Twitter is kind of mean because X will end your, your stream. They'll let you stream live, and then, and, and then boom, they'll erase it automatically. And Matt Lerma's in the chat, too. What's uh, up, but, Matt? But Facebook is kind of where it's at. Lots to get into today, man. Lots to get into. Uh, I, I'm going to talk later on about pop culture, about how I bought concert tickets last night to a show. Out of outside of Texas, I have no one to go with. I have no flight to get there yet. But I just Which looked one? at the tickets. Oh, we'll talk about. It. I yeah. looked at the tickets last night, and I was like, you know what? The venue is only three hundred people. I'm gonna buy the damn tickets. That's a nice venue if it's only three hundred. It's maybe five hundred max. Yeah, I mean, but, it's not like you're with the masses, thousands and thousands. You right. know, yeah. So we'll we'll get into that, but my goodness, I walk in the door, and I'm already hell bent on. We're talking Spurs. We're talking about um, Victor Women. I'm almost getting a quadruple double, and you're at, and and you are in the driveway of your house because we do this the show at your house, yeah. and uh, you're like, can you believe the Houston Texans? I said blockbuster trade. Blockbuster trade. Now I will say this: my good friend, who's a huge Houston Texans fan, James Pledger. Oh yeah, man pointed out this on twitter so i'm not going to take credit for it but it made perfect sense about a week ago he goes what's casario up to here's what the what the texans have done over the past couple of weeks they traded their first round draft pick for two second rounders there was more involved in that oh yeah 
But what that does is it gets them draft capital, and it also lowers their cap. It does. Because they don't have to pay that first-round price tag. The second thing they did was they were redoing certain contracts, making certain salaries bonuses, and freeing up cap space. So Pledger from San Antonio Sports Star said, what's going on? He was kind of like that guy from ESPN, the what's going on, Brian Windhorst. Oh, yeah. The brother you that know, can't fit in his square. Yeah. So what's, <laughs> what's, what's going on here? So yeah. I want to thank James for pointing that out because I thought about it and I was thinking to myself, well, who are they going to get? Because if you're clearing that much cap space, if you're clearing enough cap space to assume a $20 million contract, something is in the works, and apparently it has been for a while because the Houston Texans picked up four-time Pro Bowler Stephon Diggs from the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, for draft compensation. For draft compensation, which means we don't know what exactly it's for. But this is according to Adam Schefter of ESPN. This came down within the last 15 minutes. And the second we came in, you were pissed off because you are a reformed Dallas Cowboy fan. Yeah. A lapsed Dallas Cowboy fan. Yeah. Fuck the Cowboys. Because I'm... you're you're done. You're <laughs> done. done. You're done. And we heard Jerry Jones say we're all in. All in. Come second on. year in a row he's been doing <laughs> that, right? Second year in a row he has said that. Yeah. But they have done absolutely nothing. Meantime, the Houston Texans are wheeling and dealing. Again, the Buffalo Bills finalizing a trade to send four-time Pro Bowler Stephon Diggs to the Texans, according to ESPN, in exchange for draft compensation. Um, this is a big deal because look at what the Texans have done over the past. He's ridiculous. Dude. The past offseason. They traded for running back Joe Mixon, who I know is coming off a bad injury. But Joe Mixon is a name. He's a good running back. They also got uh, uh, Daniil Hunter, you know, to a two-year, forty-nine million dollar contract. One of the best defenders that was available in free agency. They went and got him. Um, they have Nico Collins and Tank Dell already as wide receivers. So now you have Nico Collins, Tank Dell. You've got Dalton Schultz, and you've got Joe Mixon, You're and you've back. got Trayvon, uh, and, and you've got uh, Stephon Diggs. That offense is stout now. What they got to do in the draft, go pick up a bunch of offensive linemen. Got to protect your guys. Dude, this team is loaded. And their secondary's not bad. And and we know that the quarterback of the Texans, CJ Stroud, is going to get better. He's legit, man. The kid's legit, dude. Mm-hmm. He's a winner. Winners win, right? Winners win. Noah Perez reaches out to us in our YouTube stream, says, as a diehard Texans fan, I used to pray for times like this. Now, he's saying that it's only a second-round pick, but there's there's a lot of – the draft compensation is a little bit different, man, because it, it could be higher than that. It could be lower than that. But even if it is a second-round pick, which has not been confirmed, I, I have not seen yeah, that yet. I haven't seen it yet. Um, that's still a pickup that they got just for dropping down in the draft. <laughs> I love this. Bet GM, MGM. Yes. They put live look at CJ Stroud, and they have a guy that's partying. He's just dancing. <laughs> is this going to be the year that Texans, I don't know, I say Texans, not the, not the team, yeah. but people from Texas start to take notice of the, the other Houston team? Texans? I think so. I think the Dallas Cowboys at this point, they're freaking done, dude. They are done. Stick a fork in them. Jerry Jones and his front office made no attempts to do anything, even though they said they're all in. All in. You know, you're going to we like the team we have. Right. You're going to roll out there with Dak. You already know what he's capable of. He's good in the in the regular season. But then when it comes to the playoff time or wild card, he shits the bed every time. The Texans also got Jeff Aduka in the offseason, a cornerback who was a top 10 pick just like four years ago. But going on to crapping the bed, as you mentioned, about uh, about the Cowboys and about Steven and Jerry. They're punting on this season. Yeah, man. It's a wash, dude. I, you know what? People gave me so much crap this past year. And I said it for the for the for the longest time that this was the end of the window. The Super Bowl window has closed on the Dallas Cowboys. They are not a Super Bowl contending team. And I don't care that the over-unders came out for victories yesterday by the casinos and they listed the Cowboys as being a 10 and a half, 11 win team. God, man. my butt. I think they're gonna be like they'll probably be another eight eight win maybe eight nine nine and eight yeah they're destined for that yeah 
And you know what's good too? If you look at see what happened with Bet MGM, mm -hmm. they put the Super Bowl odds for the Texans at plus twenty five hundred. That was the other day. Now plus fifteen hundred to win the AFC. It was plus twelve hundred for the Texans. Now plus five eight fifty. Now here's the thing about the Texans right now that I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some water on okay yeah. i know a lot of texans fans are excited and they have every reason to be excited oh, yeah, dude. now i was I, i'm a saints fan but i was also a houston texans fan i got off the texans bandwagon with bill o'brien because bill o'brien was the worst coach and worst part of that organization for many many years right the dude had no nads he was <laughs> awful but what they've done ever since they got D'Amico ryan that is a culture change Nick Casario going over there. It is a culture change. And you can see how important it is from the top to bottom, how that all works. And you have a young coach who's a former Houston Texan himself out there, defensive minded and knowing that he needs to have other people around him who are just as good on the offensive end of the ball. The Houston Texans are making moves, but there's one thing that kind of concerns me about the Texans this year is that their schedule is rough for the 2024 season 2024 season here are the home games that they have ravens bills dolphins bears lions titans jaguars and colts we are their division of opponents but think about that joe their non-division <clears throat> opponents coming into the nrg the ravens the bills the dolphins the bears the lions at Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Tua, you know, the, the, the up and coming Bears team and the Lions talent. team. Those are the home team home games for the Texans this year. The Texans will be lucky in their eight home games to go five and three. They will, but they have the talent. They have the that's exactly right. They have the talent. Now going on the road, the Texans play at Jerry World. Dude, that's gonna be dude. If the Texans go into Jerry World. <laughs> And just drop a 40 on them. They also have to go into Green Bay. They have to play at Minnesota. They have to go to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs this year. Damn, that's a tough schedule. They have to go to New York. They have to go in the snow to play in New York and in, in New England. The Texans might be a better team this year. A dramatic, I mean, last year's team was good enough to make the playoffs. They might even be significantly better they than they win. were last season. They and might still miss they, the playoffs. They still miss win. the playoffs. That's that that sucks because the Texans have no easy games. They've they got their division, they've got their division games against the Titans and against the Jaguars that and the Colts that they might be able to roll over. They need to win five of their six division games. They do to make the playoffs. They're capable of doing it with this squad. And the thing is, if the Texans manage to have a winning season good enough to make the playoffs, they're battle tested. You know, I mean, that group that they have right now. They could possibly win. Yeah. Out, you know, like AFC, you know, they could go. There might be talks about them going to the Super Bowl, depending on how well they play and how battle tested they are against these uh, top tier opponents. Dude, if they go 10 and 7 and make the playoffs, jeez, man. That would be amazing with, with that schedule now to various is asking the question when does the nfl schedule come out i'm not exactly sure we know who the opponents are yeah we know who the opponents are we don't know when they're going to play them right but yeah. to go on the road to green bay kansas city dallas minnesota new england new york that's that's rough for detroit to come in baltimore to come in buffalo miami to come in chicago to come in this is a rough they have to go five and one Five and one in the division to even have a chance of making the playoffs, which is sad because sometimes the deck is stacked in your favor and sometimes it's not, and it's not the Texans' favor. But you know what? They have the team to make it happen, though. I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I'm not going to sit here and say that the Texans are not going to make the playoffs. What I am saying is that the Texans are they have they have the the the, the deck stacked against them. It's going to be difficult because that AFC is rough. The yeah, AFC, man. when you have Lamar Jackson and, and Josh Allen, and you've got Joe Burrow, and you've got Patrick Mahomes, and all of these guys. It is a tough conference to get through. 
the Texans need to need to win their division, man. That's they it. Do. They need to win their division. They're capable, though. Oh, yes, most definitely. But again, the big news of the day, the Houston Texans trading for Stephon Diggs. According to Adam Schefter of ESPN, it is about to be finalized. So I don't think technically it's happened yet, but it's in exchange for draft consideration. The Texans, if they go out to Jerry World, beat them 40 to 17. It's over, man. That's it, man. I think Cowboy fans are checked out this year. Yeah, I'm, I'm already checked out. And the season hasn't even started for the lack of moves that Jerry and the front office have made. And maybe, just maybe, this is exactly what the Cowboys need. Because the Cowboys are a brand. They're not a winning team. They'll go out and get the 11 wins, 12 wins, but they're not a winning culture out there. I mean, Dalton Schultz of the Texans said as much. He was like, hey, man, I play for the Texans. I used to play for the Cowboys. Let me tell you the difference between the two. No. D'Lo reaches out to us on our YouTube stream saying Dallas is the second best team in Texas. Uh, that's incorrect. <laughs> that is incorrect because I think the Texas Longhorns and UTSA Roadrunners are better. Oh, uh, God. But, you know, the Texas, the, the, what the Dallas Cowboys need is to be checked. And right now, they know, Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones knows, that they have a ton of fans who are going to buy the T-shirts. They're going to go to Oxnard, California. They're going to fill up Jerry World. They're going to buy, you know, pay for five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars seats over there yeah. to watch a product that has no chance of winning the Super Bowl. And that's what, booty what, crumbs. What, what needs that's to what happen? What needs to happen is Cowboy fans need to pull back and go, "No, we're not going to take this." Go ahead and give us that that meme that they have with Homer Simpson going back in the bushes. Go back in the bushes. Come back out with your Texans gear on. <laughs> I mean, and, and let me ask you this, Cowboy fans. What would it take for you to stop cheering for them? And I know a lot of fans are out there saying, well, it's it's a childhood thing. And and you, you go back and go, well, I remember the glory days of the 90s, but that was a long, long time ago. That was 30 years ago. Oh, man, that's... I mean, at that point in time, what did, you, what did we always make fun of? Oh, we have to break out the VHS. Yeah. VCRs. Dude, you know? a DVD... Literal DVD did not exist no. when the Cowboys last won their Super Bowl. A year later, the movie Twister was the first mass-produced DVD movie at Blockbuster Video. That came out after the Cowboys won their last Super Bowl. When the Cowboys won their last Super Bowl, the, the song One Sweet Day by Mariah <laughs> Carey and <laughs> Boys to Men was number one. That's no lie. That's quite a bill. No, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I just wonder, because now you have the darling on the other side being the Houston Texans. Are they now America's team? Well, I'm not saying they're America's team. <laughs> to, to be honest with you, if you had to go with, with what America's team is, America's team is probably one of two teams. Like, realistically, the Cowboys crowned themselves that, right? America's NFL, team. NFL Films crowned them that, yeah. and, and, and they kind of ran with it. I've always thought that it's it's either the Steelers or the Packers. The Packers, because it's a small market team and also because it's actually owned by the fans. The Steelers, because the Steelers come from a, you know, a working class town type of thing. I, I wouldn't say Matt the Niners. Lerma. I wouldn't say the, the Patriots. Look at Matt Lerma's uh, comment here. <laughs> the Cowboys are the third best team in Texas. <laughs> the Brahmas look pretty damn good hey, on Easter Sunday. They did look pretty damn good. They did. Go Brahmas, man. Yeah, I ain't going to watch any of that. Crap. Come on, Mike. You, you will get 12 seconds of Brahma coverage every week on this show. Oh, not going to watch any man. of that. Not going to watch any of that. But the the idea of, of, of jumping loyalty in teams, like I could never not be a Spurs fan. I mean, despite all that's been going down, I will forever be a Spurs fan. But when I came to the NFL, I grew up a Houston Oilers fan. And they eventually moved to Memphis and then to Nashville. And it hurt me. It broke my heart. Yeah. And right around that time, the Texans came out. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll cheer for the Texans. But really, I was angry at the city of Houston. I was angry at Bud Adams. I was angry at the Oilers. And I followed the Oilers over there. And I would cheer for Steve McNair and Eddie George because that's what I was used to. Warren Moon. Warren Moon. Well, the Moon great never, Warren Moon. Moon never played over there, though. No, but I'm saying when he played for the Oilers and – 
that was a great Warren Moon. That's the the Oilers that I knew. Yeah, growing. I, up. I got to meet Warren Moon at Super Bowl Radio Row, and yeah. I fanboyed. Me and Joe Ryan Eagle fanboyed. Giddy, you got yeah, a giddy. Because <laughs> I I have met so many athletes over the years. I never fanboy, but with Warren Moon, I did. And I like like um, word vomit. I was like, I was such a big fan of the Oilers. I loved your entire team, and he was like, okay. <laughs> and and then I was like I was like I was like man I was like just growing up and and I I literally named eighty percent of the starting lineup yeah you know I was like I was like okay you know you had your wideouts you know you had Ernest Givens and Drew Hill on one side and you had Curtis Duncan and Haywood Jeffries and Lorenzo White and you had uh, Alan Pinkett and then you had uh, Munchak and Stepnowski and I was naming I named the entire team yeah and Warren Moon was like damn you did like this team <laughs> I was like I bled baby blue the Oilers were my team um, I was probably lost in the dark for about five years because after the Super Bowl where uh, the Rams beat the uh, Titans by one yard oh god I remember that dude I decided that I wasn't going to cheer for the Titans anymore because they were they weren't the Oilers anymore. And it wasn't until Hurricane Katrina came out and devastated the Superdome, all of Louisiana, and the, the Saints came to San Antonio and called the Alamo Dome home for three games. Yeah. I go, I went to all three games. Joe Horn, he loved the city. Joe here. Horn wanted to live yeah. in San Antonio, the, the former wide receiver of the uh, of the Saints. He wanted it to be here. Um, there's a lot of speculation that it's actually the Spurs that pulled strings to try to everyone blames Jerry Jones. It might in fact have been the Spurs that prevented the Saints from coming here. Uh I I hear that a lot from journalists who say that they don't print that, but that's the word that they got that it's more the Spurs stopping it than it was Jerry Jones. Yeah, well, they're the only professional sports team that we have. And here. it's also at the same time of the year, you know, because NFL gets going in September goes all the way through January yeah. and if you're lucky February that's when the NBA gets going and maybe the Spurs were intimidated because what's bigger the NFL or the NBA Oh if, NFL if, no if, question If the Saints came over here in 2005 Yeah and the Saints stayed the Saints would be bigger in San Antonio than the Spurs Yeah football's big across the world but not only that but in Texas football's king man Yeah I mean, football is king and and we deserve a team in this area, but that's where we go into uniting with Austin and having a united front with them. And and a lot of a lot of people in the city of San Antonio kind of like, you know, plug their nose at the idea of that. Yeah. But guess what? When that idea gets popped up and people from Austin think about it, they plug their nose because they don't want to be associated with us either. But do you know what we are? If you've ever been to Chicago, I don't know if you've ever been to Chicago before. For those of you who are listening. Chicago is really two cities. There's the north side and the south side. Yeah, look the, at what it, town Texas yeah, is. Yeah, the Spurs told my ex-wife to leave me. Yeah, <laughs> They talked to my ex, too, apparently. My, my bad takes. No, but uh, it, it, it's funny because when you go to Chicago, uh, you have the, the Cub fans and you have the fans of the White Sox, right? The north and the south. And that dynamic actually exists between San Antonio and Austin. Austin is very much like the north part of Chicago. San Antonio is very much like the south part of Chicago, kind of the working class type of uh, area, whereas the uh, hoity-toity uh, north side of Chicago is kind of like, you know, like where, where Ferris Bueller grew up, the Breakfast Club. That's more Austin than it is San Antonio. But again, the big news, Stefan Diggs, wide receiver, four-time Pro Bowler, going to the Houston Texans, according to Adam Schefter of ESPN. The news came down within the past hour or so. Congratulations to the Texans, but my goodness, they have a tough, tough schedule I'm reading along a, the way. A tweet that somebody put out here on the X, and he says, Spurs, please improve this team over the summer because I need one of my teams to make me happy. Dallas Cowboys are cooked, and I long no longer believe and have any faith in them. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Matt Lerman says until San Antonio gets an NFL team, it's vamos puro pinche Brahmas. Brahmas. Dude, I ain't gonna watch. Oh, I'm not, I'm not Mike, gonna. I'm no, I, dude. I'm man. not gonna watch semi-pro football. Dude. You know what, Matt Lerma? We need to round up the troops from the Puto Network, and we need to all go to a Brahmas game and support. I, I'm all in for the Brahmas, man. Yeah, I won't be there. I won't be there. I went to the Commanders game, and then I had so much fun, and then it was done. 
it was done. So you're salty because of that? Well, well, what what other football team have we had? We've had the, the gunslingers. gunslingers. We still have the gunslingers, by the way. Yeah, I mean, what the arena, arena football? football over at the uh, Freeman College? Yeah, you gonna go see that? It's fun. It's 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 fun. It's entertainment, but it's not. It's not going because I'm a sports fan. I would go if I have nothing better to do that oh, day. Man, we're gonna go to at least one of those games just to just to have fun. Yeah, just to have fun. Nah, I'm good. Come on, Mike. Talk, send me a postcard. Tell me. Oh man. You know, uh, let's talk about the Spurs because last night the Spurs lost. Last night they they almost won. Again, they, they almost won. And you know what? You cannot deny the fact that the Spurs have been playing better. Uh, defensively, they're playing better. Offensively, they're playing better. Now, people are asking me the question: Well, Jimenez, does this mean that you, you know you trust in Pop? No, because they played better in March last year too. Remember March of last year? I remember they March. They were balling in March last year. They were losing a lot of games last year, but they were balling. So it is what it is. The Spurs will probably have the worst record in franchise history in 51 years, and that is the moral of the story. I don't care what happens in March. But last night, something cool almost happened because Victor Wembanyama was so close to becoming the fifth player in NBA history to have a quadruple-double. At his so age, too, close. in his rookie at, season. At, at age man. 20, as a rookie, this is a guy, man. This is a guy. Wembenyama yesterday, 23 points, 15 rebounds, nine blocks, eight assists, was two assists and one block away from history. Again, that hasn't happened in over 30 years. The last player to do it was David Robinson. Yeah. Alvin Robertson of the Spurs also did this back in the day. But Wemby is putting up some major, major numbers. Yes. And again, I know Jokic went off for 42 points. Jokic is the best player in the NBA. And Jokic, dare I say, is a top 10 player of all time in the NBA. He's already knocking on that door. Let's go ahead and kick Kobe Bryant off that conversation because Kobe Bryant is not Nikola Jokic. Dude, Nikola Jokic is the truth. And you know what? The guy starts winning some more chips. It's going to be there just by just pure. I wonder where he's at in the running for MVP this year. Oh, he's going to win it again. I'm like, the guy is just crazy good. Man. He's going to win it again. And how do you deny his greatness when he keeps winning the MVP award? And he's also a champion. But, you know, it's good that Wemby went up against the Joker because even after the game, you saw the Joker go over and say probably some nice things to Wemby. Right, uh, and they know what's happening with because this is the, this is the worst that you're ever gonna see Wemby play, and his worst is still pretty damn good. I think Wemby is gonna be that general generational player that's gonna change the center position moving forward. Right now, Embiid won the MVP last year. Yeah, Embiid won the MVP last year. Should have won it. They just didn't want to give it to Jokic. Yeah, but Jokic is gonna win it again this year, which will be his third time in four years. He's a two-time MVP, six-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA first team. So think about that. He'll be MVP for a third time, All-NBA four times. He was All-NBA second team twice. He was Rookie of the Year first team, uh, All-Rookie first team, rather. Oh, and by the way, this was the guy that was drafted in the second round. And he's just 29 years old. He just turned 29. He's still got a lot of game, man. He's got about another 10 years of greatness still in him. Nikola Jokic talking about the fact that um, that he joked after the after the game about how Wemby stuffed him the first time and was like, "Hey man, I'm going to get you next time," and then Wemby stuffed him a second, third, and fourth time. And he, so, how often do you have Nikola Jokic get blocked four times? But at the same time, Nikola Jokic is so devastating down low; you can't stop him. He's he's a, an incredible passer. I can't think of a big guy who can pass just like this guy can. Like Sabonis from way back when. But Sabonis, when he came into the league and he played yeah. with the Blazers, he wasn't his peak self. If he would have come in to the league when he was younger, right. it would have been over, man. He would have been the greatest passing big man in NBA history. I'm glad that you mentioned Sabonis because Sabonis is one of those uh, those stars from the 90s that kind of gets forgotten. The dude was crazy He good, was man. good, but... Jokic is better than Sabonis. Oh, yeah, he's a better version of him. I mean, when we saw Sabonis here with the Blazers, he was already at the end of his career. Yeah. You know, but if he had come in earlier, man, he would have been maybe making the Hall of Fame, you know? Jokic, 42 points, 16 rebounds last night, 18 of 32 shooting, and the guy only had six free throw attempts. 
I mean, when you get 42 points and only have five made free throws, that just shows how good you are. Um, Michael Porter Jr. last night also had 16 rebounds. Aaron Gordon had 23 for the, the Nuggets. Over for the Spurs, Malachi Branham, my son! We saw him over at Taco Bell about uh, four days ago. The one yeah. on Petrenko Road, he was signing autographs. Uh, he went out for 24 points, was 3 of 8 from 3. Don't forget about Champagne. Julian Champagne getting a, a double figures for he, the again. It's been a you he's know, been he, playing good, dude. There's been a stretch. He's getting extended minutes. He had been playing about 20 minutes or so. He had 37 yesterday, had 11 points, five boards. Uh, Zach Collins, you know what? Zach Collins has been shooting a lot oh, better man, recently. He's still booty crumbs, bro. He's a little bit better than what he was. Mamu, 24 minutes played. Again, the Spurs were shorthanded. Keldon Johnson apparently has a, a stomach bug. So you believe that? Yeah, I do. I mean, if he does, great, dude. But I mean, as many games as he's played already, he deserves some rest, bro. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to put down diarrhea as a, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, remember how they said Tim Duncan out because he's old, old out. Old. Yeah, they're not going to say the runs. <laughs> you know, yeah. that, that's not going to happen. He looked pretty good on the bench, man. He was, you know, cheering the team on. But I'm not. I mean, I'm excited about a potential quadruple double, and it's going to happen in Wemby's career. It's, oh, it it's, is. It is destined to happen. Now, it might not happen this year. Everyone say, well, what about the last game of the season because the Pistons suck? Never know. Maybe, maybe it'll happen then. But it's going to happen, and it shows that Wemby is becoming a top 10 player in the NBA and eventually will become one of the three best players in the NBA. The thing about it, though, is this. I'm not excited by any of this in March. The Spurs did this last year. The Spurs went out and played like crap for five months. Actually, no, last year they started off hot. Then they played like crap for four months. And then they they uh, uh, turned it up in March. And I was, I was all excited. I was like, man, we, we may have somebody with this uh, Julian Champagne, right? I was getting all excited about certain players, right? Yeah, well, we, we, got, we got to develop them. We gotta, <laughs> we, all we got to do is develop them. Yeah, no, man. The Spurs, this team, you still got to blow it up. Yeah, man. you got to blow it up. The Spurs have something obviously with Wemby. The Spurs, we now know that Devin Vassell, if he is healthy, that's the knock against him. He tends to get hurt from time to time, but when healthy, is a viable number three option. Sohan is a viable four option because we don't know what we're going to get with him. Dude, that guy Sohan is either going to give you twenty five and fifteen. Or is going to give you four and six. You but don't know what I you're like going to get kid. from him. I still like the kid. You know what? If he starts to lock down people defensively a lot better, and and he is an above average defender. He's still young. He's still he learning. is an above average defender. Then maybe if as the fourth option. But the question is, as Brian Windhorst pointed out in ESPN on a podcast a couple of days ago, he's saying that a veteran will want to come to San Antonio. Well, this why draft, they? this draft is weak. Can the Spurs get incrementally better? Entice. Can, can the Spurs act like the Houston Texans and pick up some meaningful pieces? Right, because, right. It's on the clock. Because if the Spurs roll out there and it's Wemby with Trey Jones, Devin Vassell, Julian Champagne, and Jeremy Sohan. Copy, paste. Co yeah, control C, <laughs> control V. Yeah. That's a 25-30 win team. They might win a couple more games, but you've seen – I guess what they can do. I mean, they're just, they don't have the experience nor the talent to win these close games. And that's the thing. How many close games have they lost this season? If they would have won those games, they could have been closer to 30 wins. Garrett reaches out to us. Greetings from the Netherlands saying uh, Wimby will be the first with double digits in five categories. Jeez, <laughs> Quintuple man. double. So what would that be? That'd be, uh, are we going to add turnovers to that? What, what's going to be the fifth category? Points, steals, blocks, assists. Are we missing something? Point, steals, block, assist. I can't even. Think I can't of think of a fifth one, category, but it's funny nonetheless because it's because if it was possible, it'd probably be true. But thinking about Wimby and this season, obviously we he has shown to be the truth. Obviously, the Spurs have shown that. Oh, they said steals, ten steals. Oh, ten steals. That would be hard. Well, that's how Alvin Robertson did it one time. Yeah, true enough. Uh, Alvin did it with steals as opposed to blocks. Um, he, I think Alvin's the only person to do it with steals. That's what that's what's crazy. Uh, Alvin Robertson, man, for all the the crap that went down with him criminally over the years, he was, he was a good player, a man. very very good player. 
back in 1986, his game was 20 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, 10 steals. When Hakeem Olajuwon did it, 18 points, 16 rebounds, 10 assists, 11 blocks. The most gaudy of the quadruple doubles was David Robinson when he had 34 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, and 10 blocks. Now, there are some who believe that a triple double hap a quadruple double happened with Tim Duncan in the playoffs. I don't it know if did. you remember that. They didn't credit him. They didn't credit him for two blocks. That if you go back and watch the tape, he got credited for eight blocks. He had a triple double with blocks. If you go back and watch it, they say he, he had 10 blocks. Yeah, they just didn't credit him. They didn't credit him. That was a 20 10 10 10 game. Yeah. That still pisses me off. It still pisses me off. And, you know, so Brian Wright, you're on the clock, man. You're on the clock because this was a throwaway season. He's got to do something as far as I'm not saying that they have to go out and, again, get superstars. They just need to get some players that can shoot. They need to get some veteran presence there that can go ahead and knock down some threes, knock down some open jumpers, and help this team win these close games. They need that talent and experience. And it doesn't mean that you have to go after a bona fide superstar. But you got to do something. M. Easy reaches out to us and says that he would like to see City Sissoko play more minutes than guys like Champagne. I like City, man. Dude, City has been balling out in Austin. Got called up to the varsity squad with all these injuries. Uh, last night had five minutes played, only had one board, uh, no shot attempts. Uh, City Sissoko, though, um, that was a first round talent that they got in the second round. That was somebody that a lot of the mock drafts had going as one of the last picks in the first round. Spurs got him in the, in, in the 40s area when it comes to it. And the Spurs right now have their own first-round draft pick, potentially have Toronto's. It's a 50-50 chance, essentially. 50% chance of it being conveyed this year, 50% chance of it being conveyed next year. This draft is considered to be weak, but yeah. then again, we need talent. And if we're going to get – here's the argument for getting a second first-rounder this year and wanting it. It may not be a star, but – but – it is a smaller salary, right? Because first rounders are guaranteed spots on the team. It's a smaller salary so that the Spurs can then divert their attention to a bigger named free agent. The Spurs have already locked down a lot of their guys, right? So the Spurs have locked down Vassell to a long-term deal. His, his raise takes effect next year. The Spurs have locked down Keldon Johnson to a long-term deal. I guess the next one would be, what, Sohan eventually? But Sohan, Bronham, and Wesley are on the same draft class, so they would have to be paid pretty much right around the same time. Yeah. Well, well hear me out on this one, dude. I've, I've been looking. I've been observing. And me and my my boy, Jonas Clark, we're talking yesterday. Zach Eddy, he's fallen down mm -hmm. in the latest NBA mock drafts, right? Depending on where the Spurs ping pong balls fall, and if let's say they are maybe – fourth, fifth, sixth, and Eddie's dropping down there, and he's there for the picking, dude. Do you go ahead and draft another seven-foot-four player and pair him alongside Wemby? So it's funny that you mentioned Zach Eddie. He's seven-foot-four from Purdue. Purdue. And still alive, you know, in March Madness, and his stock is going up. The problem with Zach Eddie is that... He's a big boy, dude. He's a big boy, but he's also slow as F, man. Uh, he he plods along the way, and it's just so difficult to kind he of... He could be that anchor in the paint. Because Wemby, he likes to play outside of the paint. He likes to be hanging out beyond that three-point line, wants to shoot, doesn't really want to get in that paint and really bang bodies, per se. Right. You know, that's not really Wemby's style. He's more of a, a shooter, you know? But if you get somebody like Eddie, you put him in the paint and let him bang bodies down low, that frees Wemby up. Well, there's a brand new mock draft coming out right now. Uh, Bleacher Report came out today. They have as the number one player off the board, if the Pistons were to win the lottery, being Alexander Saar, 7-1 center, playing for Perth Wildcats. Number two, they have Rob Dillingham going at number two to the Wizards. Kentucky guard, plays like Kemba Walker. He's a, buck. He's a bucket, dude. He's a walking bucket. Uh, at three, they have Charlotte going after Ron Holland. They have the Spurs actually dropping to number four, but picking up Zachary Rissache, who a lot of people believe is going to be the best player in the draft, or at least uh, 
considered for the top spot. Number five, they have Donovan Klingen from Kentucky, uh, sorry, from UConn, rather, going number five. He's a center. Reed Shepard going six with the Toronto Raptors. So let's say the Spurs were to get that pick, that six pick. Would we be happy with a Reed Shepard at six or a Stefan Castle? I think I would like a Stefan Castle, to be honest with you. I mean, if we're if, if you think defense, he's more spur esque, if defense is the identity, then that's the guy. You know, that is the guy. 19 years old. His pro comparison is RJ Barrett. And I like RJ Barrett. But would the Spurs pass on a Nikola Topic? Because, man, you look at these mock drafts. Some of these mock drafts have Nikola Topic going top two or three. Others are saying he's going to be number seven, eight, or nine. There's not one player there that stands out like Wemby did this past season. M. Easy says that he would like to have Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, or Ron Holland. Dillingham's my guy, dude. Dillingham can make a bucket, dude. He can make a bucket. Now, as far as uh, Zach Eady is concerned, I've seen some mock drafts have him late first round or mid first round, rather. This one right here has him 25. NBA Draft Net has him going 37. Who, it's, who is that? Zach Eady. Eddie. Yeah, Eady. And they, they have him around pick 30 it's, and, and this is the thing it, it fluctuates a lot some of them have some mock drafts have him going up others have him going down he's kind of all over the place i mean if you look at the kid and you're seeing what he is he's just a raw talent slow methodical i mean you 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 draft him you're taking a gamble yeah a big one so if the spurs here's the thing about the spurs right now with their first pick whether they draft at number one three six, eight, because it can be all over the place, right? Because the Spurs, they won games. And because they no. won games, they might slide down to the four spot as opposed to being in the top three with the best odds of winning the the, uh, the NBA draft lottery. But look at these names. Risa Shea, small forward. Yeah, That's what we need, right? That That is exactly what we need. Um, They say that he's more like Michael Porter Jr. We saw Michael Porter Jr. yesterday. Right, so uh, Alex Sar, would I be happy with an Alex Sar? Would I be happy with a six eleven center who is described as being the next type of Jaron Jackson Jr.? I wouldn't. I, I'd be, be opposed that. to that at all. I'd dude. be happy with that. <laughs> would I be okay with a uh, Nikola Topic who is described as a Goran Goran Dragic SGA light type of guy? Yeah, I'd be happy with that. What about Cody Williams? His comparison is Jalen Rose. That's not a bad according, comparison. According to the ringer. Nine, six, eight, he's six, eight, 19 years old. His brother's a stud for the uh, OKC Thunder. I wouldn't mind having him. Now, Ron Holland of G League Ignite, he's the only player that I just don't have a good feel for, man. Yeah. I just don't. But he's described as being someone who plays like Harrison Barnes. Uh, uh, there's another player named Mata, Matas Buzelis, who's a 6'11 guard. A 6'11 guard. Described as being a Lamar Odom kind of guy. Stefan Castle, another name that I wouldn't mind on this team. Described as a Anthony Black, Markel Fultz kind of guy. I think more of a Tyrese Maxey, potentially. Reed Shepard, out of Kentucky, described as Someone who's very reminiscent of Derek White. And then lastly, Jacoby Walter out of Baylor, described as a Chris Middleton kind of guy. Rob Dillingham, by the way, that's another name that we said that that uh, shades of Lou Williams, shades of Kemba Walker. The point about it is this, is that because of this draft and the way, the way that the talent stacks up, that there's no tier one. Yeah. There's a lot of tier two players. So whoever the Spurs get, I'm going to be happy with because there is no Victor Wembanyama there. There's no LeBron James. There's no John Morant. There's no Zion Williamson where you know that these guys should be going number one or one and two. That doesn't exist this year. So I'm going to buy into whoever Brian Wright picks because I've, I named 11 names there, Joe, and I'd be happy with 10 of them. And if the Spurs had two picks, I'd be happy with any of those combinations. Because there, there's, and that's the thing about Brian Wright. We say that he's on the clock. When it comes to the draft, yeah, dude, I mean, 
there's there's no losing combination when it comes to it. No lo- losing combination. Um, Bane State, which is out, says draft for fit. I don't think we can draft for fit. We're not good enough to draft for fit. I think we have to draft for talent. <clears throat> yeah, the Spurs, depending on who where they fall, you know, they're going to wind up drafting best available player. That's what they've been doing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to draft for fit, that's where you go ahead and go deeper into the the second round. Right. You know, and there's another name also, Isaiah Collier from USC, the freshman guard out there. Um, this is a guy that was supposed to be top five. And he had such a crappy freshman season. He's fallen. He's fallen. Yeah. And he's like a top five, he's one of those five star athletes. It's whether or not he can be coached up. Uh, described as being a human highlight film in a tank, a 6'4 point guard, 19 years old, 205 pounds. Shades of Tyreek Evans, they say. Yeah, I just saw this too. The Slam University just put out Providence's Devin Carter will enter the 2024 NBA draft. Oh, who's that? Uh, Devin Carter from okay. Providence. Very yeah. nice. We had somebody who mentioned uh, Dalton Connect on our our stream. Uh, that's an interesting one from Tennessee. Uh, the problem is, is that Dalton Connect is a senior, and you know you don't want to have uh, M. Easy was the guy. He said Dalton Connect is the guy I would love for the Spurs to get uh, middle or late of the first round. Uh, we don't have a middle or late first round pick, but if he was there, I guess so. But the thing is, is that you know this is somebody who is older. He's twenty two years old. Yeah. We kind of know what he already is. Actually, he's not 22. He's 23. He's older than more than half the Spurs squad right now. So that's basically it. But let's go ahead and get uh, some entertainment bump in. All right. Let's go ahead and do it. Well, apparently P. Diddy still has some income coming in. Because according to TMZ, Ciroc, the vodka, is not replacing Diddy with 50 Cent, despite reports claiming that that's going to happen. Uh, P. Diddy, I don't want to say he's on the run, but it sure looked like it. (laughs) Uh, His houses were raided in in L.A. and in Miami, uh, part of a federal investigation into human trafficking. Uh, Lots of allegations against him. Dude, I think P. Diddy has been canceled for good. Yeah, dude. Sounds like it, man. You know... Let's talk about canceled people and whether or not they can come back. Mila Kunis, Aston Kutcher. Dude, that's exactly where I was going to go. You read my mind when it came to that. Okay, so let's talk about Diddy. Yeah. He paid off one of his accusers who said that uh, she was forced into having sex with multiple men while he watched and um, that uh, she, he threatened her and things like that. And that was his ex or something, right? He, yeah. uh, he, he paid her off. Yeah. And it went away. Oh, because she was coming out. She came out swinging. Yeah. He's like, hey, 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 hey. Yes. Yeah. Let's sweep that under the rug. <laughs> so, I mean, he paid her off just as fast as the Spurs paid off Dr. Hillary Cawthon when those allegations came yeah, out yeah. about Josh Primo. Something happened. As soon as they had the press release or the press conference. Right. You know, with the, the CD greasy haired lawyer <laughs> they're like yeah man let's just settle let's settle this so the allegations against p diddy are pretty serious right so it's not a joking matter but we we you were trying to be lighthearted about it but it's really not that much of a joking matter but the fact of the matter is is that the allegations against him are very very serious and whether or not he gets prosecuted or not just knowing that the feds raided your home and that there's video of it is big And it showed it was a military style attack on his home and they got his kids and the, the, the mother is complaining about it, saying that it was racial in, in nature. But either way, uh, again, TMZ is reporting that, uh, Ciroc has not dropped Diddy yet, but there are reports out there that Ciroc might be actually talking about that. They're, they're going to have to distance themselves from him, dude. They have to. Yeah. You know, oh, we got a super chat here from Tex Mex Frank, part of the Mike Taylor barbecue. Oh, yeah. He says, uh, see you, amigos, Saturday, show up hungry, stop by the come and smoke for some barbecue. Thank you, Mike and Stephanie, for providing your taste buds to judge. Dude, I appreciate it, man. Looking forward to it again it's from 10 to 4. It's on Peacock, it's near Woodlawn Lake. It's uh, benefiting the Salvation Army, the Boys and Girls Club. Mike Taylor Show has done a fantastic job with this. Mike Taylor now with Rudy J in the In the Building podcast. Yeah. Um, they do an amazing job. 
Uh, they texted me earlier today saying, get there early and get there hungry. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the paleta. Somebody's on, offered me a paleta, so I'm going to take them up on that. Really? Yeah, they have paletas over there. I love paletas. Dude. I know, dude. But they you know, get you in trouble, man. You, you got to stick to the one, Mike. Well, you know what? Actually, no. Because paletas, compared to ice cream, oh, yeah, they're, have, they're less fat, have less fat and less calories. They got more fruit in them, you know? But still, dude, I mean, at, at our age, Mike, we, we start indulging a little too much. It stays there. <laughs> got some breaking news. And thank you for Dila for reminding us. Like yeah. The Bleacher Report right now. Angel Reese is headed to the WNBA. She will enter the 2024 WNBA draft. She's projected to be a first-round draft pick. Last mock draft I saw on the uh, women's side is having her go somewhere around seven or eight in the yeah. draft. The ratings came out, and I called it. I called it. It had a hot – the LSU-Iowa game from Monday night had the highest ratings of any basketball game. Over 12 million? Or Over something? 12 million. Yeah. It had higher ratings than the NBA Finals. Jeez, that's a lot, dude. NBA Finals averaged 11, had 12.3 million. That LSU-Iowa game was a big deal. And for a lot of the people out there who are reaching out to me going, you hey, man, why are you talking so much about LSU Iowa is it because your daughter went to LSU? No, it's because this is what people wanted to watch. It this was, all was the this talk. was the game. This was all the talk. Big time. And it's going to get even bigger because if Caitlin Clark makes it to the finals, she's in the final four, they take on UConn, and they play an undefeated South Carolina team in the finals, that might eclipse this. But then again, no one hates South Carolina, but people hate Angel Reese and people hate LSU. People hate their head coach. But Angel Reese is a badass dude. And I remind people all the time, LSU was up five when Angel Reese got hurt. Yeah, she she's not using it as an excuse. Though. She is not. Yeah. But it, it was a factor because you saw her hobble up and down the court the entire time. Yeah, she still got that ankle. Still got 28 rebounds, but she was not the same. She could The shooting form was different. It looked awkward. She couldn't attack defensively. Yeah. She was grabbing a lot of boards because she's the tallest woman out there. Uh, but Angel Reese, again, entering the WNBA draft. So we were talking about, about uh, people who get canceled. <laughs> oh, gosh, man. So I was watching one of my shows, and uh, uh, Matt Larima turned me on to the show called uh, Royal Pains. And uh, by the way, Matt, if you're listening, if you're listening, Divya. Yeah. Nugget. Yeah, so I was watching the show yesterday, and I got to – season six or seven and i'm looking at this and I'm, I'm looking at like one of the actors that's that's on there it's kind of like csi miami or csi in that there's like a different you know every episode has like a different person coming in yeah uh to, to as a, like a like that, that, that stars for one episode well it was danny masterson of that 70s show who is now in prison for rape yeah and i couldn't get through that episode man I couldn't get through that episode. Like, nah, this ain't for me. I mean, it was it was difficult, man. It was difficult. So, you know, Danny Masterson is canceled for life because he's going to be in jail for pretty much the rest of his life. But Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher, I'm disgusted by them. I think they're done. I think they're done. They wrote the these letters in support of Danny Masterson despite the fact that they had a charity helping those who were victims of sexual assault and they were telling a judge to go light on their friend who was convicted of rape. And after he got convicted, they tried to be like, try to backtrack. Yeah. Too late, man. Do that whole, that 70s show cast except for Topher Grace. Topher Grace is the only got like, the like fuck one. out of there. bro. Yeah, Topher Grace. <laughs> the only thing that Topher Grace has ever done that's been bad is he admitted to having a heart on doing a scene with Laura Linney and yeah. she called him out on that. That was a funny interview that he did. Yeah. That she was, uh, it was a sex scene and you're not supposed to get aroused. aroused yeah. But Laura Linney, the middle aged hottie at the time, still pretty hot. Yeah. Was like on top of him and that she got mad at him. And he told this whole interview about yeah. how he couldn't help but get aroused. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst he did. Yeah. Okay, Laura Prepon, who played uh, uh, Donna, the the the, the redhead, redhead. Yeah, you know, a little quirky, a little bit out there, 
but I guess she's okay. But everybody else from Wilbur, Val- Wilbur Valderrama for grooming girls to you know, being a, be a douchebag yeah. to Danny Masters and a rapist to Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher being kind of just jackasses and supporting a, a convicted rapist while running a charity to, to benefit those who who are, are sexual assault victims. Even the charity had to distance themselves and like basically kick them out. And Dude, like, we're done. And if you've seen the interviews that Demi Moore had of Ashton Kutcher because they were married to, for a short while, yeah. guy's an ass. That whole like eighty percent of the cast, and then the other one, the uh, the sister of of uh, Topher Grace's character, he she passed away. Yeah, kind of crazy, man. Led Bane says, "Christian uh, Kutcher is uh, friends with Diddy." <laughs> Donna is huge. All right, what's going on with Donna? Don- Donna is a tall chick, man. She was hot though. <laughs> Kutcher is friends with Diddy. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, the redhead Donna uh, Pinciotti was her name. She the show. came out uh, in that nighty show. They tried to go ahead and like a spinoff, you know, continuing. And it, it was cute. I liked it. Eh. It was all. Right. Eh. It, it was good enough. It's all right. But she was also on uh, Orange Is the New Black. Oh yeah, yeah. And she was pretty good from there. John Williams says, "Good morning from Dallas. What's going on, my man? Dallas. Good morning, brother. The Big D, home of the second best NFL team in the uh, state. Third by Matt." Lerma the, the standards, bra- the and I, I'm, I'm going to back Lerma up on that one too, man. I like the Brahmas. Led too. Bane asking the question: Does Mike remember Sarah Rue? Do I? Uh, her turn in uh, Big Bang Theory was pretty good. She's she's a thicky dude. She's a she's a she's a big bone girl, but she's she's pretty hot. Redhead. That's, that's what we're talking. We should have had oh, a redhead look at, look bracket. At, look we, at what Jonathan C says. Uh, if that's the case, we should all be canceled for supporting Kobe and gushing all over Kobe. Do we not remember what happened with his lawsuit? Remember. You see, this, remember. Is, this is a great topic, Jonathan, because this is the power of social media, which did not exist back then. Dude, the biggest story of my lifetime that was that involved an athlete is probably O.J. Simpson. Oh, man. We saw that in the in the classroom as it was happening live. Can I tell you what I OJ was doing? OJ on the run. Can I tell you what I was doing? What are you doing? I had a girlfriend named Tina. Yeah. And she and I broke up. Like, I didn't want to see her anymore. She didn't want to see me anymore. We broke up. We were at her house. And I'm looking over at the screen, and the Bronco was driving down the highway. Down the five in California, right? Yeah. And we had just broken up, and she's all pissed off. And I'm there going, can I turn this up? And I sat there next to my now ex-girlfriend watching the Bronco chase. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. But can I watch this real quick? <laughs> yeah, it's O.J. Simpson. It's the juice. It's the guy from, uh, from the Hertz uh, commercials. The Hertz commercials. Yeah. The Naked Gun, right? Yeah, yeah, he was a football player, but he was also all that. Yeah. But imagine that happening in today's age of Twitter of x of oh man of, of facebook it would have been even bigger you even had the supporters of oj that were over the overpasses with signs yeah go oj you know and the thing about it, though is this is that he, uh jonathan c mentioning kobe bryant i'll give another name ben roethlisberger Joe, yeah he's accused of rape happening inside of a bar bathroom allegedly and not just one occasion, but multiple. Right. Yeah. But again, all of this happened before iPhones existed. All of this happened before there was Facebook. Because I know there was social media before. There was MySpace. But MySpace was not a news opinion exchanging type of thing. MySpace uh, was more about music and movies. Yeah. You would make your own like little website, mini website, put funny things up there, interact with people and, and yeah. just talk. And it was... It was the infancy of social media. It was. And then yeah. and then uh, Mark Zuckerberg ruined it. Yeah. He dude. perfected it and then ruined it. Uh, Bainstein saying Carl Malone. <laughs> God, bro. <laughs> Woo! We talk about it. Biggest jackass. This, in professional this sports, show has man. gone to negative town right away, man. People are just out there. Yeah. Uh, that, how, that how, same I'm going to throw another one out there. Tony Parker, Brent Berry. Oh man, dude! Why dude, you if Tony bring up Parker, Brent Barry was going on right now, that would be huge news. But because that didn't happen in the age of Facebook, it happened in the age of MySpace. It wasn't as big of a deal. That's the thing. 
by the way, we picked up a four more, four more, uh, what's it called, uh, subscribers. We're now at 835, dude. That 1,000 mark, dude, is going to be it's coming up. It's coming up. Frank Harris coming on next next uh, week might be a big deal because if yeah. Meep Meep Nation and all that. I wonder it. if we can get him to sign something and then we can give it away. Oh, that's great. You know, um, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. That's a very good point. Um, you know, the thing about about it is, is I, I want some personality from him. I, oh, yeah. I, I don't want it to be where it's like, let's talk about UTSA football. Talk about oh, whatever, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Whatever, dude. Let's, just, let's just get that personality out there. Uh, J and J H N S B reaches out and says, nah, man, Parker just broke. <laughs> Parker just broke, broke. Code. He bad bro. <laughs> like, how do you, how do you do that with an, with another guy's wife? Like y'all are friends. Y'all hang out. I mean, what's going through your head, dude? Mario Cavazos says Donald's been raping chicks for years. He is convicted of that. And on a on a civil side, look at his mic gonna streak at Hemisphere Park for one k. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I think the party should be. Uh, I think the party should be. I thought you were gonna say karaoke. Well, I mean, we should have a, a a daytime one and a nighttime one. Daytime party could be the missions are playing. Yeah, get together, yeah. Get yeah. together at the missions game. Grab a few hot dogs. Buy the fans some beers. Yeah, do stuff like that. Or maybe we have a night out. Maybe we do have a party. Uh, My birthday party was at Pix the other day. I know it was loud. No, it was far kind of for us. Dude, don't do not It was too far. All right, Jeff Garcia (laughs) from Locked On Spurs and Kent Swab. He didn't make it. He did Jeff made it. We love you, Jeff. We love you. We love you. (laughs) Don't forget to subscribe to Jeff on Twitter and threads. Hey, speaking of Jeff, let's go ahead and play his ad read, dude. All right, cool. Locked On Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, (laughs) the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked On Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at JeffGKens5SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at JeffGSpursZone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at YouTube.com forward slash at Locked On Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked On Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Love you, Jeff. <laughs> I'll make you fun of him, dude. I did text him the other day, though, and I told him a big birthday of mine is going to be coming up next year. So he better be ready, dude, because I'm going to be sending the invites out to just a select few of us. Yeah. We're going somewhere next year. Nice. I'll let you know. Come I'll on, let man. you know. You know, I got to save some money for poodles in Paris, man. Oh, uh, God. Dude, when that, when that gets announced, <laughs> when that gets announced. I, I will make plan. I will buy tickets without even actually having travel plans. And I did that last night, by the way, because last night I decided to buy tickets to a concert. And it's a guy that no one knows. It's a guy that no one knows. But um, do you ever watch the TV show Nashville? Yeah, I've, I've watched it before. Okay, so there is a. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play this. This is courtesy of ABC. If you want to, yeah, I'll go ahead and play. Go on my screen. There was a TV show called Nashville that came out. It, right? Was a great, great show. <laughs> I loved it. I loved this show. One of the best. Go on on Hulu. Do yourself a favor. Watch this show. Charles Essence got on the back. Right. He is also uh, was one of the comedians on Whose Line Is It Anyway on ABC many many years ago. But he's an excellent singer. He sings country music. Uh, great show with Connie Britton. She's amazing. Anything Connie Britton's in is worth watching. Friday Night Lights, whatever the case may be. But long story short, Charles Esten is performing at a small theater out there in Nashville in June. And there's only about four or 500 seats at that theater. And I saw that they were all being bought. Like they were being, you know, they were all going. And I yeah. wanted to go. But instead of just saying, you know what? Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll go. But because by the time I go out there and get the tickets and and get the flight and whatnot, by the time all that happens, it's going to be sold out. So I thought to myself, you know what? Just buy the damn tickets and go. 
I have no one to go with. I bought two tickets. I have no one to go with, but I'm going to figure it out. And uh, worst case scenario, I might reach out to our good friend Jill Jelnick. Uh, I don't know if you oh, remember her. Oh yeah, she's so she is super nice, dude. I've met her a couple times. Yeah, she was always super nice. They introduced me to her one time when I was out there. I believe I was covering the Commanders games, and she was still here in San Antonio. And one of my good friends that I know in the media, he introduced me to her, and we just all sat down. We started eating together because we're eating the before we went ahead and started the game covering it. She was super nice, dude. Yeah, she was super nice. She was. She's amazing. Uh, I did a few shows with her at San Antonio Sports Star. She's amazing. Follow her on Twitter as well. Uh, she she's a, a sports anchor now for the Fox station there in, um, uh, out there in Nashville. Uh, Charles Eston performing in June in Nashville. Uh, that is the Bluebird Cafe. Uh, the uh, TV show Nashville kind of focused on the Bluebird Cafe. It is a historic site where the best of the best of country music have gotten their start you know taylor swift played there when she was a nobody you know garth brooks played there when he was a nobody um that was so so um such a good show such good music and i'm not the biggest country country music fan uh but uh i'm gonna go i'm gonna go check it out what a great show i might start watching it again hayden pantieri hayden pantieri is in that show nugget yeah dude she's always hot nugget she came out in that series uh, on NBC years ago, Heroes. Yeah. Yeah, man. So let me ask you this. Uh, this is going to be my year of trips. I went to Vegas last month. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had this thing where I've been very blessed financially recently. I paid off all my debt. Yeah. So, you know, right now I've got my mortgage. I've got my truck payment. And I've got my utilities. And that's it. Yeah. So I'm doing okay. And business has been good. So that being said, because I'm going through a divorce and it should be finalized in July, um, we're, there's certain things that we need to have, ducks in a row that we need to put together and it's going to be around July. Yeah. So now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, I want to go on trips. I want to like have a rebirth the year. Yeah. You know, because last year was awful for me. I go to a cruise, bro. Yeah. I mean, my sister invited me on a cruise. My family's going to from Seattle to Alaska, but it's also the same time as my daughter's 21st birthday and she wants to oh, go to Vegas. Yeah, no, man, you got to stay with her, dude. So I went to Vegas last month and did that for March Madness with my friends. It was good times. This month I'm going to Charlotte for business, but I'm also going to go to New Orleans to go visit my daughter who's in Baton Rouge. We're going to go to a concert there. Every month I want to do something or every six weeks or so. So I have a poll out on Twitter at MJ Acquired Taste asking where should I go in May? The Lovers and Friend concert in Vegas? Now, I wouldn't go to Vegas for like three or four days. I would just go for the concert. I'd just go there, maybe spend one day there, go to the concert, and then be and then bounce. Basically a 48-hour trip. Or should I knock off one of my bucket list items and go to the Kentucky Derby there in Lexington, Kentucky? If you've never been to the Kentucky Derby? And that's some on your bucket list. Why not go? I mean, I'd wear the hats. I'd wear the suit. I mean, there's nuggets galore. <laughs> you know, the ladies, uh, you know, they're going to be all dressed up to the nines with the hats and everything. Again, I'd buy two tickets and have no one to go with. But a Kentucky Derby sounds like it's it's a good time, dude. I might want to spend some time at a distillery over there because I know the oh, Jim Beam yeah. distillery. You got to. The, the, Jack Daniels Distillery might go check that out, man. Might you have to, out. man. And you you can drop a little bit of coin on the ponies, dude. I'm a pretty good better on the pony ponies, man. I I I I'm the one who reads the the daily forum, and I go and I, <laughs> I I look at their speed. I look at who their father was, who the mother was, who you know. I I look at all of that. You stuff. know, who I, I know how to read it. I went one time to Ritama Park, and oh, the whole family went. Right, everybody went, and I was there with my 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 little cousin. Well, at the time, she was probably like 15 years old. Her name's Melissa, Missy, right? So me and her paired up, and we're trying to figure out who we're going to bet on, right? And she's like, how is it? She goes, how are we going to bet on that? I said, how do you want to bet? She goes, I'm going to bet on the on the color of the pony. <laughs> and the, just the way I, they look, and, the, and if I like them or not, I'm like, fuck it. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Uh, so I told her, we win, I'll give you half. Okay. So we go over there and she's telling me, I like this one. I like this one. And we said to hell with all this 
stats and all that. And we just bet on whatever she was feeling. Dude, we freaking won. <laughs> you know, uh, the superstitions involved in it. By the way, I remember going to, to Rotama Park for live racing, and live racing is coming back June 27th to Rotama Park. Maybe we got to do something over there, man. The uh, I'm looking at the racing calendar over there. Rotama Park's a good time, dude, especially on a summer night, dude. Well, they had that storm that happened a few years ago that took out the they had a tornado oh yeah i remember that i don't know if it was a tornado or straight line winds caused by a tornado i think it was the winds yeah uh but it knocked out the uh the uh scoreboard oh yeah i remember I mean, that it, it obliterated it uh but they're gonna have some live racing beginning on june 27th they're gonna be racing from thursdays through saturdays most weeks all the way till mid-august uh they're quarter horse races though so if you're hoping to see a race that's like a mile in length. You're not going to be happy yeah. with it. It's the quarter horses. Those are 300, 400, 500 yard races. It's just the big straightaway. It's, yeah. a, it's a big race. Just It's a sprint. Uh, I used to own a couple of horses at Rotoma Park. Really? I was a co-owner of, of two of them. Wow. I had a 50% uh, share in one and a 25% share in the other. Uh, they made enough money to feed themselves and to sustain. I never made any money, but I didn't lose any money. Yeah, they, they they their prize money was always enough to keep them going. Yeah, they never won. I think one time they got to fourth place or third place one time, and uh, I bailed after one season. Hey, breaking news! I just saw this by the Express News. What's going on? One of the last remaining buildings erected in the 1968 World's Fair will be demolished, ending a battle over its fate and potentially paving the way for a new Spurs Arena, and that is. The Institute, Institute of, of Texas Cultures. Cultures. Okay. Demolish. They're going to demolish it to the ground. You know, they, they were talking about just taking it apart piece by piece. No, they're going to demolish it. You know, I'm sorry, but I care about the Spurs more than that building. Who goes there anymore? No dude. one cares. And the people that care about it are the ones who probably complain about a salamander who's going to be affected by a, a constructed i i am concerned about some things liberal about other things but like you know you have the, the 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 people who are like very much into the 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 the, the environmentalists yeah. you know oh it's affecting the salamander of this and the 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 toad of this what shut the hell up no one cares no one cares you care because you need something to bitch about okay the institute of texan cultures part of the 1968 world's fair there will be an everlasting part of the World's Fair. It's called the Tower of Americas, right? The other thing that you're going to have is the Hilton Palacio del Rio. You also have one of the last structures there too was the the courthouse that's nearby yeah. the the tower. What's that? What do they call that? That courthouse, the round one. Uh, yeah, all falling apart and shit. Oh, is that the wood building? I don't know what they call it, but that is also one of the holdovers too. So the Hilton Palacio del Rio, the way that it was built was. It wasn't built like normal, normal um, construction. Construction where you yeah. build it up. They built them by rooms, yeah. And the rooms were furnished, and they were bust or bust. They were they were trucked from Castroville, yeah, all the way to San Antonio downtown, and they're like a bunch of Lego pieces. Yeah, they, they just hoisted Stacked them up top. There. Uh, very interesting, but that's still part of the hemisphere, uh, the uh, world's fair back yeah. in the day. You have the Tower of Americas, Palacio del Rio. Uh, the federal courthouse. That's federal right. courthouse. Yeah, that's that's, that's the old John Wood building. Yeah. Uh, John Wood killed by who? Woody Harrelson's dad. Wow. Interesting. Um, I don't care about the Institute of Texas cultures. Build the Spurs Arena right there. We need it right there. Can you imagine how nice that would be to have the new arena there in close proximity to the Alamo Dome? Yeah. The last time I went to the um, Institute, Institute of Texan Cultures, I didn't even go inside. I went to Asian Fest. Yeah. And Oh, that's outside. They, they that's only, outside. Yeah. yeah. And then I went inside there and I was like, hmm, nothing here worth watching. It smells old. It smells <laughs> old. <laughs> Just because something's old doesn't mean it's historic is what I'm trying to say. You know what? They should never knock down. They should have never knocked down. Should never get rid of. The old buttercrust factory, bro. <laughs> you could still smell that bread in there. Okay, we, we need to have a conversation <laughs> tomorrow about this. What could we if we could bring back something in San Antonio? Buttercrust. <laughs> would it be the gondolas at the uh, zoo? Oh the, God, the, the dude. April Fool's joke that they had at the zoo, yeah. say that they were bringing it back. <laughs> uh, or would it be Malibu Grand Prix? 
Hey, let's have a conversation about that tomorrow. That's a great conversation piece. We're also going to bring For back Throwback Thursday. We're going to bring back the baddie brackets to, uh, tonight. Oh, nice. So we'll nice. have we'll have we'll be down to the elite eight by tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. But uh, everyone have a fantastic day again. Thank you for subscribing. I'm going to click on it one more time. What do you think the odds are? And we got one more a couple more. Let's see. Let's see. Hit refresh. We are at we were at 770 yesterday and now we're at 835. All right. 65 in 24 hours. Very, very nice. Don't forget the like button on the way out the door. And if you want to buy us a coffee, the QR codes on the top left. Everyone have a fantastic time. And don't forget again, you know what a giveaway? I'm going to give away two plates, two plates to the Mike Taylor barbecue uh, cook-off, which is this Saturday. Uh, we'll give that away. Uh, so put that down, um, Joe. Yeah. And uh, just so I give the right address, the Mike Taylor barbecue cook-off, is going to take place this Saturday. It benefits the Salvation Army and the Boys and Girls Club. It's uh, going to start from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Lots of celebrity judges out there, a lot of media personality types. It's at the Salvation Army Peacock Boys and Girls Club, which is at 615 Peacock Avenue next to um, next to Woodlawn Lake. Uh, come say hi to me. Come say hi to Joe. Come yeah. say hi to CT. We're all going to be there. Stephanie Mejia. Steph Mejia will be there. Uh, we have uh, Chuck McAtinick from... Maximum Sports yeah. will be there. And my boy RJ, man. RJ Marquez will be out there from KSAT. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, Mariah Medina from KSAT as well, or News Force Antonio, rather. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, celebrities. Uh, what's her name? She did the she did the uh, she did the Spurs broadcast the other day. Oh, I forgot her name. She was from Yellow Texas. Yellow. Oh, I don't remember. Yellow Texas. It is uh, her name. Is her name is? Because I remember Katie used to do that too. Aaron Carreno. Okay. Yeah, she will be there as well. Very, very cool. Everyone have a fantastic day. We'll be back tomorrow. Again, you can follow me on Twitter at MJ Acquired Taste. Joe is at Two Shots Podcast. See you guys tomorrow. 